to the City Show. Pat O'Malley here. You there? Not too bad for February. You know, we get through February without any snow. We're in good shape. I never liked February. Hasn't been a good month for me in my life. And we can get through here with no snow. Even March, man. March can get you. Like I said, it comes in like a lion goes down like a lamb, but that lion can leave a lot of snow. So far, we've been very lucky weather-wise, uh, but not everybody has been. Uh, this uh, Wednesday, the 22nd, from 5 to 7, I'm going to be producing a uh, fundraiser to benefit the um, fire victims of the West New York and Union City fires that occurred on uh, February the 8th. One was a four alarm, one was a five alarm. Devastating. Uh, they demo down buildings, you got businesses are gone, uh, people lost their homes, everything. For that matter, I started a not for profit called Angels in the Ashes about a year ago. I just got to finish the 501c3 paperwork, but the corporation is set, the name, all that is set, um, to help fire victims. Uh, but when they fire, it's just devastating. You lose everything. Yeah, and it, it's yeah, all your belongings, your ID, your medicines, your paperwork, everything's gone. That's one of the things Angels in the Ashes will work on doing. The idea of Angels in the Ashes is getting people back on the feet with children. That's what we're concentrating on, keeping those families and those children in their community, in their schools, around their family, their friends, instead of devastating and emotionally stressful as it is. Though the easier we can make it on helping these people get back on their feet is what we're going to do. What we're going to do in a fundraiser on Wednesday, let's see if we can raise some money. The money will be directed to uh, the GoFundMe set up for West New York and um, Union City and scheduled to appear on this fundraiser on the 22nd. And we'll have it you know, archived on the uh, uh, live stream and YouTube and all. And we'll probably do excerpts to continue uh, raising money for the uh, victim. You're going to have uh, Commissioner Bill O'Day, Governor Jim McGreevy, journalist John Hines. Fernando Uribe, Congressman Rob Menendez Jr., uh, running for assembly, North Bergen uh, Commissioner, uh, Julio Julio Marenco, Albi Osiris, Craig Guy, Stick Romano, Cosmo Crillo, Commissioner from West New York, North Bergen, North Hudson, Fire and Rescue, and I think Steve Fulop and Nick Sacco, and there'll even be more. So make the, mark the date, please be part of it. Uh, be an angel, contribute what you can. We're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. We're back, City Show. Just let me finish up with the fundraiser Wednesday, February the 22nd from 5 to 7 uh, we'll be streaming that on our Vimeo live stream, on YouTube, on Facebook, and on Twitter. I think I got everything covered. So like I said before, you know, be an angel, donate what you can, five, ten dollars, whatever you can afford. Try to help these people and these businesses get back on their feet, keep them in their communities, and hopefully uh, you know, put this devastating tragedy behind them all. Um, Jersey City, I'm sure you read it there, was a... Uh, a situation where an angry patron 
from a Mexican restaurant in downtown Jersey City, for whatever reason, uh, got very aggravated and backed up his vehicle into the entrance of this uh, restaurant. I think it's on Grand Street, if I'm not mistaken. And damaged, seriously, seriously damaged the front of the building. And, of course, their car. And people witnessed this occur, and they were calling 911 in Jersey City, and nobody was answering the phone. And that's a huge problem. Now, again, nobody here was hurt. There was physical damage to the building. And fortunately, they were able to secure it that, you know, they didn't miss any uh, uh, work. Uh, but it could have been a heart attack. It could have been whatever emergency shooting, whatever the case is, nobody answered the phone. So that's a problem. And Mayor Fulop has now got wind of what happened. And there are going to be changes here. Um, I believe on Valentine's Day, the 14th, that um, quite a few people didn't even show up in the radio room, the 9-11 system. And maybe it's time we look at things differently in Jersey City and Hudson County. Right now, I think Mayor Fulop is thinking about privatizing the 9-11 uh, service. Really what we need to look at and take this opportunity to think about shared services. And the odd thing is we discussed this very issue before on this show about, you know, maybe two months ago. To save every municipality, and it really has to be the goal of every municipality to start saving money. It is getting very expensive to live in North Hudson, in Hudson County. It's getting very expensive, you know, especially in Jersey City and Hoboken. Um, any opportunity we can to look at shared services with the other municipalities we should. And here is a perfect example. A countywide 9-11 system run by uh, uh, the Sheriff's Department. I'm sure Sheriff Frank can handle this. He would get funding from all 12 municipalities and the county. It would save all 12 municipalities money because every municipality who's running a 911. You know, they got their own personnel in there, their own expenses, their own benefits, everything that's involved with employees. Here is an excellent opportunity where we can save all those communities money and yet have a more efficient 911 system in Hudson County. Instead of having a bunch of, you know, uh, municipalities having their own 911, one. One that is more efficient, hopefully better managed, and it saves the taxpayers in their communities money. You know, even if there was a concern, some people were talking about, well, you got Connie, you got Harrison, you know, they're on the other side of the uh, Hackensack River. Even if we just concentrated on east of the Hackensack River, what I call the boulevard communities, uh, it is still going to save every municipality money, and it will be a more efficient system with one group operating it instead of different municipalities all operating it. Like I said, I am sure the sheriff's department can handle this and you can get sufficient funding from each one of those municipalities and the county. And again, it's more efficient and it saves everybody money. Any effort that can be made in Hudson County to save money, to save taxpayer dollars, we should. The cost of living in Hudson County is becoming astronomical. You know, like I said earlier, it, Hoboken and Jersey City, very expensive. Those two cities lead the nation in the most expensive rentals, Jersey City and Hoboken. Depending on what um, list you're looking at, what survey, it's either Jersey City one or Hoboken one, but Jersey City is in the top or Hoboken's in the top. This is a way we can save money and have more of an efficient system. This is something we need to look at. Yes, it's time we start considering the tax dollars and the property taxes here in Hudson County. And by going with a countywide 911 service, it's going to save everybody money. We, it, 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 it's almost like a dirty word or something like that, to do shared services. Here is an excellent opportunity. I spoke about shared services with, like, road paving. You know, Jersey City, my home city, we got a lot of road paving got to be done. 
you know, Mayor Fulop and the JCMUA are doing um, sewer and water mains all over the city. So you got to dig up the streets, and then you do the backfills. All right, we got some rough road. We have water mains and sewer lines that are going to last for generations to come. But <laughs> the price of all that good work and fresh water is some bad roads right now. We should have shared services in Hudson County for road paving. Some cities should have the equipment to do the road paving. Instead of us writing checks to private companies, $14 million, $16 million to do the road paving, just one of those projects would pay for all the freaking equipment. So maybe we should have, you know, uh, shared services there, shared services DPW-wise. We talked about that with Hoboken. Why does Hoboken need a DPW complex? Let's break for commercial. We'll finish this on the flip side. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. I've got cancer. We've got the highest level of cancer care. The latest clinical trials. Researchers working to find a cure. And there's navigators to guide you every step in the way. At New Jersey's only NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, your safety has always been our top priority. I've got cancer, but I also have peace of mind. Jersey City Medical Center and Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Let's beat cancer together. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights. Your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants. All major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Jersey City Ford, certified parts and service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at hannapintodevelopment.com. Anna Pinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. City Show, Pat Amelia here. You know, there are so many things that we can save money on by shared services. The road paving was something we talked about in the past. You know, Jersey City, Seacall, whatever municipality gets the equipment and they're the road paver. They pave the roads for whatever Seacall is, North Bergen, Hoboken, whatever it is, and we can do it cheaper. If a private concern it can turn like a 30% profit, 30%, that's your money. That's your tax money. That company, and I'm not knocking the private industry, pocketed 30% profit on your tax dollars. How do we save tax dollars? We, again, we look at shared services. And if you question shared services, where can we go? Just go to any of the township's uh, websites, and you can see the redundancy from every municipality and the county of Hudson on where you can start by saving the taxpayers money. Like I said, look at any of the websites, from senior services to cultural affairs to whatever the list is there on each one of those municipalities. They are the same list on each municipality. And each of those departments and each of those 12 municipalities and the county of Hudson has a whole group of employees, a whole group of employees they are getting uh, paid, a whole group of employees with uh, health and uh, welfare benefit, a whole group of employees with pensions that come out of your tax dollars. So in some cases, you might be getting double uh, hit with municipal and county, and in some cases, ta ta uh, state tax dollars. So you're getting triple hit on some of these things. We have to seriously look at this and say, how can we cut some of these expenses? How do we cut out the redundancy with every one of the municipalities and the county of Hudson? And you can really look at the state when you're starting to look at that also. You know, you're being double or triple hit here. Um, here's one incident. 
I spoke about this a while ago. Actually, I sent it over to Mayor Fulop. Newark uh, pulled out of the state uh, health benefit policy you know, for the Blue Cross Blue Shield for their employees, and they're going um, private with, uh, I believe it's Aetna. And Newark is looking at an $87 million savings from leaving the state uh, benefit package to going private with Aetna. Uh, almost immediately, Patterson, New Jersey followed suit. I'm sure Jersey City would. Uh, if Newark can save $87 million a year, Jersey City's got to be right there at $87, maybe more. Just by looking at our health package, health and welfare package, through, I believe it's Blue Cross that uh, administers it for the state of New Jersey, just by shopping it and making sure you don't cut the employees and the, and the pensioners their benefits. By just shopping it, you get more money. Now, think of this. Say you took all 12 community or municipalities in Hudson and the county of Hudson as one bargaining group and sat down with, say, Edna, like Newark did, and negotiated. How much money could be saved by negotiating as a group the 12 municipalities and the county of Hudson to get good, no, I'll say excellent, uh, health benefits for the employees and the pensioners in Hudson County? whether it's the municipality or the county employees. How much can be saved? If Nork is looking at $87 million, how much can be saved? Who do we have to speak to to look at this to save you money on your property taxes? Somebody needs to look into this. You're a whole group here. The more we can do municipality-wise and with the county to save the property taxpayers here, and if you're saving the, uh, the taxpayers' money on property, that reflects in rent. You know, we keep talking about making uh, these towns more affordable and affordable housing. They'll get more affordable housing. Well, you can't have affordable housing if the town and the county isn't affordable. Even if we give somebody a break on affordable housing somewhere, say, uh, down in downtown Jersey City. Well, I got you a break on a the rent there. But... It's not affordable. The area itself isn't affordable for most people, not just the rent. So we've got to bring these expenses down. From the property taxes to insurance, everything that's related in Hudson County brings up the cost, especially in Jersey City and Hoboken. The more we can bring those expenses down and we can bring down those tax dollars and those property taxes, that goes right to the rents and that goes right to the food, that goes right to the price of a slice of pizza or a hamburger or, uh, you know, a... Uh, uh, furniture or clothing, whatever the case is, because all those are expenses. When they figure out how much they're going to charge for a product or a service, whatever, figured on property taxes, rent, and all, the more we can make Hudson County affordable, the better it is. But we have to work as a unit. Like I said, if Newark and Patterson can save, in the case definitely Newark said eighty-seven million dollars, what can we? What could we be saving? These are the kind of savings that the municipality should all be jumping on board with. You know, from Mayor Fulop to Mayor Sacco to Mayor Stack to Mayor Santos and, um, and Connie to Jimmy Davis, they should all be on board with this. Maybe, you know, we got a new county executive. Tom DeGee is going to, his legacy as a county executive in Hunter County is going to be glowing. You know, and that, the, the, the Guarini Justice Center, you know, most people say that's going to be Tommy's legacy. Tommy's legacy, Tommy G's legacy is getting out of rented buildings. And our park system will be his legacy. When Tommy came in, we were renting, the county was renting all over the place. Tommy systematically just got out of all those rented buildings into county-owned buildings, or he bought those rented properties. Instead of writing a rent check, he was making a mortgage payment. So he was building up assets for the county of Hudson. Maybe, if it, if it is Greg Curry Guy, who is going to be the next county of Deck. Maybe this is one of the things he should spearhead. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center has a passion for heart health. We're Hudson County's only full-service heart hospital with innovative technologies and premier cardiovascular physicians, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements, and nationally renowned care for every heart in every community. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Jersey City Medical Center. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, 
light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Welcome back, Pat O'Melia, City Show, talking about how we can save you people money, which is, somebody has got to take the initiative here. Not some goofy guy here with a, with a show. Somebody in Hudson County has got to say, it's about time we start looking at how we spend these dollars. And I'm telling you, it's shared services. I'm not even talking about consolidation, you know, like Guttenberg and East Newark. We're, you know, East, where the hell is East Newark? It's a postage size. It's, Absorb that because East Newark, you know, they got council, they got fire department, they got PDs, all that costs money. Consolidate. Probably won't see that happen. But shared services, that could happen. Governor Murphy, I don't know if he's running for president now because Biden looks like he's going to run, and Murphy said, well, Biden's running, I'm not. But Murphy just made a declaration um, that in New Jersey, by 2035, EVs electric vehicles will be the only cars sold in the state of New Jersey. Now, that is a mere 12 years from now. 12 years is not a long time. Now, is it practical to go all EV in New Jersey? <laughs> well, no, it's not. And I'll bring up a couple of reasons why. First off, we haven't even begun to start upgrading our electrical grid, locally or nationally. There is issues all over with the grid. And it is time the investments need to be made in upgrading our, our national grid and locally. Now, New York, it will be interesting to watch what happens in New York this summer when everybody turns on air conditioning because they're going to have some brownouts over there. Practicality of EVs. Let's look at Jersey City, my home city. I think 80% of the cars in Jersey City are parked on the streets of Jersey City. Jersey City, a lot of apartments, a lot of two, three-family homes, a lot of brownstones, high-rises, as such. Where would we be charging those cars if you don't have a garage or driveway or a carport? How, how, how are we going to charge these vehicles? Yeah, yeah if you're living in a, a four-unit, six-unit building, or you're running extension cords out the window across the sidewalk, the plug into your car? I don't think that's it. You know, how would you charge these cars on the street? Do we have charging stations at every parking spot? That doesn't sound practical. And who would pay for that? Who would pay for that infrastructure for a charging station at every parking spot? Because you would need that in Jersey City. Well, almost any city in, in Hudson County. Yeah, there's a lot of apartment built Union City. How are you going to charge all the cars in Union City? North Bergen, same thing. Well, at least North Bergen's kind of like, like split there with two, three family homes and apartment buildings. But Union City, Jersey City, Hoboken, where are you going to charge cars in Hoboken with all the brownstones there? It ain't going to work. And if we were to put the charging station in, say, every parking spot, who pays for that infrastructure? The government? We didn't pay for the gas stations. The oil companies paid for the gas stations. Uh, PS and G, would they be the ones that put in all these uh, charging uh, stations? Imagine, can you imagine the capital outlay for that? 
and you know they're going to be putting that on their electrical rates, and so you'll be paying for it. You may not even drive a car. You'll be paying for the electrical. And unless you have one of them superchargers, and I don't have an electrical car. I have nothing against EVs. Unless you have one of those supercharging stations, it's going to take 8 to 10 hours to fully charge your car. Again, now how are you going to do that in these municipalities like Jersey City and Hoboken? Yeah, again, I go back to the extension cord. You plug in these things, you run the extension cord out your window at the, uh, the fourth floor. Or say you live in a high rise, you got a lot of extension cords that you're going to have to run down to charge these uh, the vehicles. And the other thing, in the Northeast, batteries, cold weather affects batteries. Uh, when it gets down to like, you know, 20, 10 degrees in uh, North New Jersey, that reduces your car's um, cranking amperage by about 35% to 40%. It's the same thing with an EV's battery. Uh, batteries don't do well in the extreme cold, and they don't do well in the heat. And that's already playing out with EVs. They're seeing that when they're charging, and some of these cars don't even want to charge in the cold. Other problem with these EVs, Again, even if you're charging them, do you want to charge these things in your home? Because these things catch fire. For that matter, I will, I'm going to be surprised if one of our uh, more in tune municipalities, I'm probably looking at Jersey City or uh, North Bergen, uh, doesn't pass an ordinance saying you won't be able to charge these batteries in a residential building, or any building for that matter. Because you read it on a daily basis where somebody was charging their scooter or their car or their e-bike and the friggin' battery caught fire and it burns down the whole damn building. You know, I'm not sure we have the technology yet with the charging these lithium batteries to do these at home. But there are so many questions with EVs yet. You know, there's, there's a very small percentage of EVs on the road. I know towing companies have an issue with towing EVs. So to think that in the mere 12 years, we're going to be set up to handle all these EVs is, you're kidding yourself. And for that matter, here the environmentalists. Solar and wind is not the long-term solution for our energy needs. For that matter, they will never be the long-term solution. Not in my lifetime and not a few other lifetime. The reality is, it's still going to be oil, still going to be natural gas, and the boogeyman itself, nuclear. And unless we find some dilithium crystals somewhere, those are the most reliable sources of energy that we can look for. And the same ones we enjoy now and have done a great job. Solar and wind are not it. Going all EV in New Jersey by 2035 isn't it either. All right, I'm out of show. Don't forget, Wednesday, the 22nd, 5 to 7, fundraiser. We'll try to help some people burned out of their homes and businesses. I'm Pat Amelia. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.